Happy Valentine's Day. Frank Mims here with the Mims Morning Meeting, a sales skill enhancement training tool for the business to business salesperson. How was that Valentine's Day? Did you get everything you wanted? Nah, please, don't elaborate. I understand. If you didn't, you'll get it tonight. Look, we're still doing our question and answer sessions. They are going excellent. I'm getting more and more questions every week. If you haven't sent your questions in, you're missing a treat. This is great fun. We do two things here. We answer your question and we introduce you to a new book. And I do have a new book for you. So let's get right into the questions. Uh, my first question is from Nikki. Uh, after a what I thought was a very successful appointment, closing appointment that is, uh, my manager shared with me that I needed more, more practice on my closing skills. Okay. She did not elaborate. Hmm. Okay. How do I improve on my closing skills? Well, the first thing, Nikki, the first thing I would do is I'd go back to my manager and ask her to elaborate. Get her understanding of exactly what she would have you do when closing. Normally, I can give you the hints of what a good closing tool looks like. And here's what it is. Each time you meet with your customer, each time, you should be closing for something. Every appointment should have a close. All your final close is, is a combination of all of those closings that you've done. Basically, you've shared with him the value of your product over another's product. You share with him the cost of your product over another's product. You share for him all the benefits that you've named throughout to help him understand exactly how your product will better his environment and make his life easier. Now, if you're not bringing out the point that makes his life easier, you're missing a trick. You should be painting a picture of your product in motion with this customer's environment and the benefits it will bring. That's a good closing, uh, a, good, a good way to close, I should say. Good luck with that. Let me know what your manager says. I'd be interested in hearing from you. Thanks a lot. Next question comes from uh, Wendy. Wendy says, oh, and this is a good follow-up to, to, to Nikki's question. Uh, how does a salesperson build in value? Good question. And so I'm going to take liberties here, but since it's Valentine's Day, I'm going to say you show a whole lot of love. Here's what I mean. When you can walk into a customer's premises and they are glad to see you coming, glad to see you, you have brought value. When you can pick up the phone and give them a call and they, are, they, they, they willingly take your call and listen to you attentively, at some point you've shown value. You've shown that customer how your product or service will benefit, will benefit them throughout, the pro throughout their, their, their life cycle there. The value that you bring, anything that shows value makes it easier on the next person. Doesn't make it more complicated, makes it a lot easier. Makes his life easier. Makes his customers, customers, customers' lives easier. That's what you want to shoot for. So every time you visit with them, every time, bring value. Don't sell, bring value. The value will get you to close every time. Good question. So next question is uh, here on the laptop. Let me pull it up here. Ah, it's from Leek. I think that's the way it's pronounced. I hate cold calling. And before you throw rocks at him, Everyone has been in this exact same situation. Everyone. I hate cold calling. Networking is a better way for me to get leads and information. True. Maybe. Let's find out. My company has a policy slash rule that we cold call at least two hours each day. Why? How do I get over my fear of cold calling? Good question. Because we've all had it. And we've all done special things to make us get over the fear of it. But here, here's, here's three things you can do. The first thing, I want you to start this this morning. Make some cold calls. The more you do something, the easier it becomes. 
the words get more comfortable, the words flow out of your mouth easier, people start to believe what you're saying because now you're believing, you're putting the words in the right context, you know exactly what to fit them in, so the more you do it, the easier it will become. That's the first thing. Second, make a warm call, then a cold call. Make a warm call, then a cold call. Make a warm call, then a cold call. I know that sounds redundant, but watch this. When you make a warm call, it sets you up for the cold call. When you make a cold call, it actually sets you up for the warm call. Call someone you know. Call a good customer that, that, that you know loves to hear from you. Call a good friend. Call your wife. Call your sister. Call your brother that you haven't talked to in quite some time. And tell them what you're doing. Look, I'm getting ready to make some cold calls. Just walk, just walk me through it. I'm just warming up my voice. People will work with you. Get the people in the office to do it with you. Talk to the other people in the office. Find out what they do about cold call. The last thing I want you to do is make sure you've got a list of cold call people that you're going to cold call. Make sure that you've got three reasons to call each one of those people. If you have XYZ company, make sure you have three reasons in your repertoire that you want to call those, that, that, that you need to talk to those people. It will make your call go easier. It will make your call go a lot smoother. It will make it a lot friendly. And you'll get a lot more appointments by that. I'm almost sure that's what you're trying to do. Look, keep those calls and uh, those emails coming. They've been great uh, at the MIMS morning meeting at gmail.com. Love to get all of them. And please, give me some feedback and let me know how I'm doing, too. I can be graded also. As I told you, we'd get right into our book. Uh, I've chosen a book that was given to me by uh, at a um, uh, presentation that I made at a high school. They gave me this book as a, as a memento or, or a keepsake. But this is a very good book. And when the minute I say John C., you're going to know who I'm talking about, most of you. This is by John C. Maxwell. This is his book on self-improvement. 101 Ways. Self-improvement. Very good book. If you are a leader, you need to have this book in your pocket at all times. If you are a salesperson, you need to, you need to have this because you are a leader. You cannot lead that company to buy from you unless you know the tips in this book. Read it. Pick up a MEMS morning meeting also. Get John C.'s book. Get the MEMS morning meeting. Thanks a lot. This has been Frank MEMS. We talk at you later.